So I also want to get a bit of this sweet, sweet ad revenue. No, just kidding, doing a little pyrocynical here. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. And I'm quite excited for this differential equation exercise. It might look awfully easy, but it's not too easy. You will see in a second why this is the case. This right here is quite spicy. I hope you are going to enjoy it. Call the daddy Lambert today. There was a little hint. So let's go ahead and get started. How would you solve something like this? Well, on this side we have a function of x and y, so why not separate this at first? So let's multiply both sides by the natural log of y. So we end up with the natural log of y times dy dx, let's put it that way, is equal to x. And how would you solve something like this? Well, easily integrate both sides with respect to x and then you should be done in the normal case. So this side is just going to evaluate to x squared over 2 plus some arbitrary constant c. So this is x squared over 2 plus a constant c. And this thing right here, well, um, you can introduce a proper substitution, y being equal to something else, and you might end up with this thing right here. And now we can use a theorem I've derived before, integration using the inverse function, treating this like the inverse function of the exponential function, or you can just use integration by parts sneakily. So you can interpret this as ln of y times 1. And now we can use integration by parts because you can't really integrate the natural log of y. So something to differentiate, something to integrate, plus minus. We want to differentiate the natural log of y and we end up with 1 over y. Integrating 1 is going to leave us with y. And now we can multiply those together and take the Gaststern integral of this thing and we end up with the natural log of y times y minus the integral of y over y, that's just 1, so dy, and this thing right here is just the natural log of y times y minus y, uh, being equal to this thing. Wait a second, how in the hell would you um, find a solution to this? Because, well, we have solved for y, but now we end up with natural log of y times y, so this thing is still non-linear. How would you deal with something like that? That is the question and stuff like this is popping up in physics all the time. It's so confusing sometimes. And we are going to deal with this now. It's actually quite exciting. So for the next part, I would at first like to make this into one fraction. So advancing this c by 2 over 2. I just want to make it look more aesthetic. And you know, 2 times c is just another constant, let's call it k for example. So we end up with x squared plus k over 2. So I just want to make it more satisfying to look at. Okay, and now we have this problematic boy right here, this little bad boy. It doesn't look that hard to solve, but it's quite a feat if you don't know anything about what we are going to do next. Let's go ahead and get started. So at first I would like to use the natural log property to bring this y into here as the new exponent of y. So this thing right here is just the natural log of y to the y minus y. And wouldn't it be absolutely astonishing if we could use another natural log property, so to turn this expression into just one natural log expression. That would mean we could just exponentiate both sides and then we would maybe end up with an expression for y. So let's go ahead and get started. So what is y exactly? y is nothing but the natural log of e to the y. I hope you agree with me that we can rewrite it like that. And now we can use this set natural log property to turn this into the natural log of y to the y over e to the y. Maybe this looks a little bit better. And just like I said before, we can exponentiate both sides now using the exponential function. So on the, on the one hand, we end up with y over e to the y, so just bringing this to the y to the outside, b equal to e to the x squared plus k over 2. And here's a little fact. So this is what we are going to do next. Um, Maybe you have heard before of the Lambert W function, so that's kind of a meme at the moment. No, not a meme, it's just trending for some other reason. Everyone's making videos on that, so I also want to get a bit of this sweet, sweet ad revenue. No, just kidding, doing a little pyrocynical here. So 
if you take the function f of x being equal to x times e to the x. This thing isn't really solvable, it's quite hard to solve. Um, and we can define an inverse function of that thing. And this inverse function, we are going to call it w of x. This is the Lambert w function. And one property is, if we plug this Lambert w function into here as the argument, so for example, f of lambda w of z, for example, let's put it that way. Well, the function of the inverse function is just going to evaluate to the argument itself. So this is z being equal to, and now we have to plug in the lambda w function into here, w of z e to the w of z. And our goal for now is it to bring this expression right here into this form. And then we will see if we can use the lambda w function somehow to get a final expression for our y. So, at first I would like to raise both sides by the 1 over y power. So this is going to just cancel out to the first power and we have this thing right here now. Okay, easy peasy, melon squeezy. Or lemon squeezy, I, I don't really care. It's an anagram. You can turn melon into lemon. Oh, that's actually pretty cool. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> okay, and well, just like I said before, we want to bring it into this form right here. So we want to have this exponent multiplied by this exponential function, if you know what I mean. So why not multiply both sides by x squared plus k over 2y. Same thing on this side. So we have x squared plus k over 2y, y over e. And you might notice this and that is going to cancel out. So this is quite good actually. And you see, this thing right here is nothing but, let's put it here. So on the one hand we have f of x squared plus k over 2y now being equal to x squared plus k over 2 times e. And it's quite cool how the exponential function just pops up randomly. And you see, if we would now use the Lambert w function on this thing right here, we would end up with just the argument itself in here, which has a y in it. So that's cool. So we were able to separate this a little bit. So if we use the Lambert w function on here, we are going to end up with f of Lambert w of this thing. This is just x squared plus k over 2y being equal to Lambert w of x squared plus k over 2 times e. So this in itself is quite cool. And now all that's left to do is to multiply both sides by y and divide both sides by this weird boy right here. So finally, our expression for y is now nothing but x squared plus k over 2 times lambda w of x squared plus k over 2 times e. And <laughs> that's quite cool if you ask me. So this is quite a cool result for something easy like this, so y prime being equal to x over y. Yeah. So this is really cool. I hope you did like this little uh, special kind of differential equation, a little excursion into harder differential equations. If you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe and recommend me if you like. If you want to support me a bit more, link to my Patreon is in the description. And up until the next video, have a, um, let me search. Java day, Java, Java, Java dad. Mm-mm.